the Empire State Building. What's up? Inside of our Z100 Artist Interview Lounge, I am Crystal Rosas. You know him as the lead singer of Monoskin, the group that redefined modern rock and conquered the music world, winning the Eurovision 2021. Their talent earned them many nominations and awards like iHeartRadio Music Awards, MTV European Music Awards, Best Rock, and more. Sharing his journey on starting his new solo career, behind the scenes of his first debut songs, and everything in between. Please welcome the man that makes mustaches look sexy, Rome's heartthrob, Damiano David. Hello, everybody. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very good. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you've had a crazy week. Yeah. You've had a crazy few weeks. Yeah, Everyone intense. has just been so excited on you starting your debut career. How does that sound? It's, it's, uh, I mean, I, I'm not. Of course, it's a, it's a debut for me, so some things are new. But I, I I'm glad that I have much experience on my on my bag in my bag already because yeah. I uh, I already have all like the the weird pressure stuff already figured. That so is true. Did you think it was a good thing that you started in a group because you got to yeah. see how people react to you, how fame is, how the music industry is? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Like now, I I it's like I know how I want to do it and how I want to manage it. So it's it's. It's being a little easier. Of course, it's never easy, but but I, I, it's like I know more. So yeah, I feel like your song "Silver Lining" kind of even talked a little bit um, about that. Silver Lines, uh, your debut single produced by Labyrinth. Yeah. Silver Lines. Wait, how did that link happen with Labyrinth? It it happened because of um, Sarah Hudson. Uh, she's a songwriter. Um, I wrote a big part of the album with her and when I did my very first session of, of the whole project um, after the first session she told me uh, that she works with, with Lab and she was like Lab y'all Lab faces <laughs> <laughs> and she was like we're working on this thing and, and you would be perfect and I want you in you're, you're amazing and all this and I was like wow thank you and um, going back to like when I was 19, I was I was in London and I went uh, to see the the album release of Labyrinth, the the earliest one, Imagination. So I've always been a huge huge fan, and for me it was like wow, if this thing is happening on the first day of this project, it's like God or someone higher is telling me that I'm doing the right thing. And so um, after that, everything came pretty uh, organically. Like uh, we worked on the song and everything was very like egoless. Everyone was doing his thing and uh, I was completely free of, of, of really um, giving my interpretation to everything. It was a very beautiful uh, teamwork. I want to go back. You said you were 19 in London. I, I know that you're from Rome, right? Yeah. And so... Because here in the U.S., like we usually start from little cities and bounce around. But how does it work when you're from a, a huge city like Rome? Where, where did you go when you were studying and all those things? Uh, it, it's it's not ideal to start from Rome. It's a beautiful city, wonderful, full of inspiration. But uh, it, it also in Italy, it's like the movie city. It's not the music city. So there's not many places to play and, and to kind of kickstart a career we we were playing on the streets actually we were basking for a long time and and that's what gave us the first visibility but like what what changed the game for us was was um the participating to x-factor because in it's it's pretty hard to start a career without like any other um i don't know kind of connection yeah 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 because it's not we don't have cities like I don't know Nashville or New York itself. We don't have like many places where you regularly play gigs and you build a fan base. It's more like social medias and TV. How, what does busking do? How, do you actually make money from it? Are yeah. you meeting yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how how much would you even make busking like that? No, it was more a money thing actually that wow. then then gave us the the chance then to like record songs and shoot music videos. Of course, very like homemade and stuff, but we were i was the oldest one and i was 15 so we didn't have any salary yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. and and our parents were getting sick of paying for us so still sorry mom <laughs> so yeah so we we had to to figure out a way to to get some money and and that that was a 
pretty fair way. So you would go to school, and then after school, you guys would busk together? Yeah, sometimes without going to school. You would just skip school sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just loved it. Most and of the time. And did you have... Most of the time, you just want to go to school? <laughs> so your parents were super triggered all the time. Yeah, like, getting I, calls. I, I, I'm going to work. <laughs> yeah. well, like, wow. Did you have other jobs, or was it always music? I did, I did a terrible job one year. I was a door-to-door salesman. I was selling, like... Skincare products, uh, pillows, um, water filters, coffee machines. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you were really fearless after that because that's a hard job getting rejected. The, over and yeah, over again. that was at the same time. Like the one one of the years was one of the same summers. Completely like illegal, terrible. But do, do any stories from those times stand out to you? Any person or? <laughs> yes, but I don't know. Like I was working with like weird people. Oh, like, yeah. That was a weird thing. I was actually I was 16, so I shouldn't have been allowed to work. So that's not very recommendable, people. You, you were know? a young kid. You're like, hello, I'm like going to strangers' houses. Yeah, this is yeah, dangerous. yeah. But I paid for my own vacation, so it's oh, something wow. I'm, I'm a little proud. Yeah. Okay, and you've been hustling ever since. Yeah. And then you guys just kept going up and up. And then you said uh, at 19, how'd you end up going to that album party, uh, album release? We we were in London. <coughs> Did you travel a lot? Yes, but at the time that was um, because th- that was like a thing that was supposed to happen that then it didn't happen. So we, we had to be in London and we had like the house rented for three months and everything. And then this thing that was supposed to happen got canceled, but we already like paid for everything. So we was like, OK, let's just stay in London and and have fun here we have three months paid you know yeah, so it's that's like it. let's just stay here and we lived together for for a couple of months there in london and we met pe- of course we met people we went to like events and stuff and we learned english that was a pretty good thing yeah that was that was the first time we we made a huge step with with like the english speaking and, and so, connections and you yeah. realized you know that's really where i have to kind of lean more into yeah but that's also like just hanging with with native people and being forced to speak English and and you just get used to it and you get used to like not just I don't know surviving in another language but like ex- expressing thoughts and that's a completely different thing and I think it was a big game changer for for us in our career being able to communicate I think people take that for granted being able to speak English. I grew yeah. up speaking Spanish and then started speaking English in school and it's it's a weird it's a weird mind battle with that cuz it's like you're so proud of your your native yeah language and where you're from but also you kind of get a little shamed if you don't say things the right way in, in either language in some places right yeah thank god i have, a, I have italian figured so i can focus on, <laughs> <laughs> I can focus on english <laughs> yeah you have it figured out right yeah <laughs> so then when you're working with labyrinth on silver lines did you tell him about when you went to his no you didn't no, tell no, him no 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 this is i'm, I'm shy <laughs> but what did you learn from him uh, it's it's hard to learn from him because he's such on a high level of like genius person that it's 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 even hard to keep up with <laughs> with his brain. But I, I mean, every time I I have the chance to to even just hang with this huge 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 people, what what I always learn, what they all have in common is that if you're a if you're happy of your craft and you believe your talent, you don't you don't feel the need to talk about it all the time and to make other people feel your greatness. But it's easy for you to like step back and put everybody on the same level. And of course, he is he has years and years of experience. He's worldwide recognized as one of the best producers. I'm 25 years old and I'm starting my new solo career. So of course. On a, like on paper, we're not on the same level, but being this genius, he doesn't feel the need to let you know that he knows more than you. And so it, it creates this environment where everybody is like feels free to express their ideas and feels even and, and as pairs in the room. And I think I, I always saw music as a, as a teamwork. So I, I think it's the best environment possible to create to write music. Yeah, you learned about his humility and yeah. how that just radiated in the room and how you should be working with people. Even at his level, you're like, 
I feel free to just say, I kind of like this better or that better. And he's yeah. like, you know what, let's work off that. Yeah, no, no, strictly after I work with another very, very big producer, but it, it, not the same vibe, you know? Yeah. And that's why that's not on the record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah, you know? we all have environments where we're working with people. and I want to I wanna have fun. Like, the best part of this job is that you can make it incredibly fun so if you take that away from me i don't care if you're i don't know a demi god i don't want to work with you because you're taking away the what makes this job not being a job mm -hmm. yeah wow so when we're hearing and watching what you did with silver lines it's super theatrical yeah which is it it looks like it or it sounds like it should be in a movie or something like that i that's what i got when i was watching even the music video um, and the theme too, the theme about keeping your peace during rough times. What brought you to making that as your like debut single theme and what you were writing about? And it was basically this this song in a in a in a funny way kind of sums up the whole mental process behind the project mm -hmm. and everything I oh, went wow. through and. Um, I I started writing this this record to show a different part of me that I was keeping hidden, and after a long time doing that, I was kind of getting scared that I might lose it, and so I had to really yeah. stop, kind of stop the world around me, and really focused on focus on that. And this song has been kind of the the, the best possible storytelling for the audience but also for myself um, of, of what I was actually doing and it was the second song uh, we wrote for the record and when I when I finished writing the album I was like oh my god it's like I knew straight away what I was doing and it was just coming out from my brain and now that I'm aware of what I did and all the songs I've written this song is literally calling to be the first one because it's telling everybody what's happening myself included yeah we see that and the music video too it's just so different I mean just the, the song itself it takes you on this this journey and then the video is, is so different too you're you're dancing you're in, in different environments so how did those images come into your head when you were working with a director I had a whole like I had, I have this thing that for every song I I write, I write the video clip as well. So I had already this whole idea in my mind. Um, then we chose the 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 director, and I shared the idea with with them, and we created this this um, kind of uh, meeting point between the two ideas. Um, but the goal was to create this like very cinematic thing mm -hmm. that included like the major steps of my life and so again as well as the song it's like uh, the visuals of why I'm doing what I'm doing and what made me do what I'm doing and what made me the person I am today one part of the video that really stood out to me was when you're laying down there's like there's a cameras and photographers like everywhere and you're just kind of like oh my gosh I guess just take it all yeah. and a lot of artists even now I mean we hear Chapel Row and are battling with fame and fast fame that's what happened to, to you guys and your, your mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. so what do you think about the relationship that you have with paparazzi and with fans <laughs> paparazzi. Um, <laughs> paparazzi if you didn't yeah, yeah that was a... <laughs> i don't have a good relationship with them but no in general i think it's it's a very complex um yeah. discussion because of course we get so much love and so much so many opportunities from the people that follow us and um, I think what what would be very important to do is to bring everything back to a human level. And we like people have to remember that we are humans, but also we as so I hate this word, but like celebrities, we have to remember that we dealing with persons, with people. So as much as you do it with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones, it's up to you to set the boundaries. And every artist is different. There's people that actually enjoy being stopped on the streets because they love that type of interactions they are more extroverted they're more outgoing whatever and there's other people that really have a hard time uh, mixing their stage persona with their mm -hmm. person persona terrible 
cho- choice of words. But <laughs> like, I think we should all all just be open to just say what we think, say what we feel about it. And our fans, the ones that love us, are going to be more than willing to understand and to keep the boundaries. The other people, they're not your fans. So you don't have to be nice with them. You Like, they're not your fans. Mm-hmm. Who crosses the line is not your fan. Is I don't know. He's someone that idolizes you. And of course, you always got to be respectful with everybody. But there's nothing wrong in telling someone, hey, this is not the right moment. I'm not in the mood. Thank you for asking. But no, mm-hmm. if they don't ask, you're even allowed to be mean. Yeah, but <laughs> that's, that's, my, fair, yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah, because then you're not you brought it back to the human level of it. Hmm? Like we're still humans. And we're even we're yeah. even. So if you insult me, I'm going to. I'm going to yell back. Yeah, yeah. If you're kind to me, I'm going to be kind to you. I, it's you. We're humans. We're pair. Yeah, yeah. And seeing you perform that song now on um, Jimmy Fallon, The Tonight yeah, that Show. Was, that was big. With the, bro, that was huge. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a big deal. And it's such a big song to perform. Yeah. Your voice, I mean, you get up there and like your raspy tone. and It's hard. When, <laughs> yeah, I, I could tell. Yeah. But you, I mean, you, you just... Thanks. You are so <laughs> professional. When you found out that you were going to be invited to perform your song, on that there. was big. That was big, big, big. Yeah, it's it's. Also, as an Italian artist, we we always have Fallon as like the coolest thing from like you know it's so like lit. this this very cool character with this very cool um, late show. It's like it's a it's a goal. I mean, and, and, and having it this early and having him come personally and, and tell me, like, the song is amazing. Thank you for being here. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, thank you for having me here. So it was a it was great. I had fun. And, and there's always a very beautiful environment there. So, yeah, you. Oh, my gosh. It was it was such a great performance. And all the comments are just like, he killed it. He slayed it. Everyone's throwing you so much love. How does that feel? You're you're getting a lot of respect and love on your your solo journey now. Yeah, no, I'm very I'm very happy about it's going. I have to say, like the feedback for now, it's been pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And now I want to move on to what we're celebrating: "Born with a Broken Heart." Yeah. My uh, my boss Mark played it for me in his office, and we I was just like, "This is fun off the bat." Like it's just it's fun. It's a happy yeah. intro. It's uplifting, um, and it's also dealing with an interesting theme where you want to be enough for someone you know you're not but you want them to take a chance on you anyways (laughs) and seeing if maybe they're down to fix you is a little toxic but (laughs) it's but it's at the end it's like it's a love song it is a love song it is definitely a love song it's uh it's extremely romantic in my head um yeah, it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle that I think a lot of people go through. Um, mm-hmm. s- sometimes things happen in a moment where you're not maybe ready to to have them happen or to jump on that train, and you get very scared. What if I miss it? What if what if I am ready? What if I'm not actually ready? What if I'm wrong? What if what if a lot of what ifs mm-hmm. and. Um, I was I was um, starting my um, w- the one that today is my relationship and of course today everything is beautiful and amazing but at the time I was coming out from a from a very dark place it's hard because I have to pretend she's not on my left <laughs> um, don't worry <clears throat> you don't have to know don't worry <laughs> yeah um, so I was coming out from a very dark place and I was not really able to open up with another person and to give trust to someone else because I was so scared of of getting hurt Mm -hmm. but at the same time I was receiving so much and I was it was so clear to me that if you just get your head right this is the best thing that ever happened to you and so when when things are are a little scary to me or I can't really make up my mind around it I try to make them prettier so I can look at them and so I, I that's why the song came out and that's why the video it's like making this internal struggle a pretty thing and bringing it on stage and making and making make it something fun and and entertaining and uplifting so i can really look at it and see what's going on and thank god i did it yeah it did because when you first hear the 
the first opening, you're like, oh, this is fun, this is fun. And then when you're here, you're like, oh, this is rocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is rocky. I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> but it's a cool, it's a, it's a cool balance. Yeah. And when you're saying, like, you want to find the pretty way to say these things, that's exactly what you did. I love the bridge, the riffy scale that you do. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm hating that. Now that I have to sing it live, I'm hating that. It's but... really hard? <laughs> wow. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It, it's just so fun. Yeah, it's nice. You haven't heard that <laughs> in a long time. You don't hear that a lot right now. Yeah. And uh, the 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 poppy. I think it's like poppy rocky. What what this kind of genre of this song is, and then the end, like the the octave leading out that final chorus. Like you hit that octave up, mm -hmm. and it just kind of brings everything all together. Yeah, I love modulations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how proud are you about this song that is no, also I, getting so much love? I genuinely, genuinely love this song. I um. This was the song that kind of set the soul of the rest of the record. It was the first song in this genre that I wrote, and I immediately f uh, related so much with, like, resonated so much with the song. Um, until like a couple of sessions later, we're all about like, let's try to do that again because I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, this, this like fast piano driven mm -hmm. thing it's it's something that it's very major in the record and that's the song that made me realize it and also the theme and the melodies and the fact that it's like chest voice from 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 start to bottom it's like very mine i don't know it's uh, it's it's very personal mm -hmm. and now we are gonna put together the debut solo album coming out next year yeah, uh, yeah, next year. You got to period. It's coming out yeah. no matter what. Yeah, no, no, no. It's coming out next year. We have like some possible dates, but I, I have no idea. Yeah, no, of Yet. course. <laughs> How excited are you putting all this together and having your final, like your first piece of a whole compilation of work out? No, it is, it is, it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy, and I'm glad that I wrote all the songs. So now my job oh, is wow. done. <laughs> oh, you you wrote them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got okay, it. so you're out, and then what about the the order? Are we in there yet? I'm trying different things. I heard that's a um, hard one. Yeah, I'm I'm playing with with the the music app on the phone, trying to. For now, the best is the alphabetical, but <laughs> okay, easy. That'll just be yeah, that easy. But, no, we're gonna change it. <laughs> have um your bandmates? Have your siblings from Onaskin heard and they heard some? Sharing? They heard some of the some of the stuff. And uh, mixed reactions. Mixed course. reactions, I'm dead. Of course. <laughs> We've got some haters in the click. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, um, they have strong taste. <laughs> okay, you know? I got you, I got you. So. Yeah, it's always uh, interesting when you're in a group and just seeing from where you started with them and now what you're doing now. And Yeah, we know each other since 10 years. Wow. So that thing where... Oh my God, it's beautiful! Like that—that's—that's that's over. Like now, <laughs> we were very honest with each other, so that's—that's that's what I expected, and uh, oh. that's what I got. <laughs> I love that. Well, I just have to say congratulations. Thank you. We are so proud of you and what you're doing now. Um, I've actually seen you behind the scenes. I've seen you on red carpets. I've seen you backstage at events, and you and the team have always been so sweet to me and our team here at Z100 and iHeart. So congratulations on everything. Thank I you. cannot wait for next year when the album drops, but we are still so in love with what you've given us now Thank and you. cannot wait to see what the future holds. Looking forward for it. Yes, Damiano David. Thank you, thank you, thank Ooh. you. From the top of the Empire State Building. Z100.